Hey guys, Cody here with MWF Garage. So, we have my monster mower sitting up under a tarp right now. Last weekend I started a project trying to rebuild the clutch in it and it turned out to be a lot bigger than I thought it would. So, this is probably going to turn into like a two or three part video series that I'm releasing on Wednesdays. But, we're about to hopefully finish fabricating the um, main parts of the clutch so we can assemble the clutch later today and get the cub ready for a show Saturday. Alrighty, so last weekend we made this on the rotary table and went ahead and welded the crankshaft collet in place and it's nice and perfectly true. What this does is it goes on the crankshaft like this and there's three pins that stick out and connect into the fiber plate of the clutch. Hey Torque! You're making this hard. Well, the reason we're remaking this one is because my other one, my old one, was warped. So now, the way our clutch is set up, we run a pilot bearing that goes off the top of this, and that's what we're making now. So once we get the pilot bearing collet made, we'll weld it in, and then be able to pretty much reassemble the clutch because this will be ready to go back on the motor. So I just finished boring the hole for the bearing and we decided not to have it as a press fit. We wanted to slide in right nice and easy. So let's watch it. Now yep. try and get it back out. <laughs> no play, no slop. That's exactly what we wanted in there. Yep. If it doesn't wiggle, you're right. So, and that's exactly once it's on the shaft, you'll be right on. We just got the pilot bearing collet made, and that means it's time to go ahead and weld it in. We got that thing spinning pretty true. We got the bearing where it just slides in. So I'm pretty happy with it. It's way better than the first one we made. And hopefully this entire piece will be way better than the first one we made. Hopefully, that, yeah, that's the key word. We don't know until it happens, but I'm going ahead and getting the TIG welder set up because stick welding is just way too easy and TIG looks pretty. So we're going to do that real quick, get some awesome footage of me welding, and we'll catch back with you. That's really loud. And we'll catch you back with you when I'm done welding. See ya. All right, guys. So as you can see, we have my pilot bearing collet slightly pressed into place. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and tack weld it in two spots. And then we're going to go check it on the lathe, make sure it's still spinning true. If it is, we're going to go ahead and tack weld it in two more spots, check it one last time, and if it's still spinning true at that point, we'll go ahead and weld it in. Let's try it now. Ah, much better. Tack number two, 180 degrees apart. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and check it. Strew this back in the lathe and we'll try it one more time. And that's really warm, and I cut myself. Fantastic. 
All right, guys, so we just got the part set up in the lathe just to double check to make sure it was still true. And, well, let's see. I think it's spinning pretty good. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and we're going to finish tack welding it and then probably check it one more time and then weld it all the way around. So, I just got done welding this pilot bearing collet in. It's all TIG welded. I hope the camera's picking it up alright. So, this thing should be running true as a cucumber. I don't even know if that's the right expression. But, man, I'm happy with the welds. They look pretty good. Ran a little hot, but that's because I'm trying to penetrate into a 3 8 plate. So, I, that's all I'm going to do on this project for tonight. So, I'll go ahead and catch you guys tomorrow probably in a snap cut like this. So I just got done welding these pins in and I got them relined back up because they shifted a little bit, but see, slides up and down nice and easy. It does that on all three corners. What caused all the issues to begin with is there's a, a little teaser spring that goes in front of the throttle bearing. And well, my teaser spring exploded just from, you know, five or six years of use. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it, but I'm not replacing it with the teaser spring. I'm actually just going to replace it with a little collet because the teaser springs just, they're, they're more pain than they're worth. It's actually a pretty common modification to replace the teaser spring with the collet in the uh, Cub Cadet transmissions. So that's what I'm going to do today. found a uh, piece of rusty coal roll and I am now just going to turn it down to about the size and cut it out, drill a hole in it, and make my teaser spring collet. I'm still working on my uh, teaser spring collet, but I figured I might as well kill another bird while I'm waiting. Um, this is nice shiny metal that's going to go on something that's outside. Which means I probably should prime it and paint it so it doesn't rust. So that's what I'm doing now. I've been shaking this can for about a minute now, so hopefully it's ready to go. We'll um, spray the top side, wait about 10-15 minutes, flip it over, spray the bottom side, and then I have some blue top coat for it. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get back to work on this collet. I got it drilled out to a uh, half inch right now. This is a 5 8 drill, and that happens to be what the shaft size is, and I figured I'd use a drill bit instead of boring it. so. That's what I'm doing. We'll let that dry, finish this, paint that, hopefully have that finished then. After about 15 minutes or so, I finally got my uh, teaser spring collet made. All this is going to do is just take the place of, um, well, the teaser spring. So, took a little bit of time. I um, bored it just to fit snugly on the shaft, which it does great. So now I need to make one more little collet and um, that is just for a little spacer. It doesn't really affect anything much except just makes a uh, locking collet a little bit easier to get to. I've just got a uh, layer blue top coat put on the uh, clutch pin thing. Looks like I missed a little. Make sure that's the right stuff. Perfect. And I've also put a little bit of blue on the teaser spring 
um, collet, mainly just so it doesn't rust. I don't really think anyone's gonna ever see it, so it doesn't matter. So I went ahead and also put some um, high temperature black paint on the uh, clutch pressure plates because I had white on there before and the white looked good for a while and then it eventually started deteriorating so figured I'll just go back with black. When I left off last night I still had a couple clutch parts to do before I could assemble the clutch and as you can see here I've got my clutch back assembled which means now I get to go ahead and get this garage cleaned up where I can roll the monster mower in. Then I get to put the clutch in, get to put the motor back in, and try and get it all loaded up before I go to a show tomorrow. All right, so it's been monsooning outside for the last couple days, and well, we we're keeping the monster mower outside, which means it is soaked. But, never. No, we just part it. Eh, <laughs> most of it. All the parts that matter to me so we get to go ahead and put our freshly built clutch back in it which means i get to crawl underneath it and i don't want to do that but i guess i gotta yeah he ain't got no choice all righty so that's about the smoothest this thing or at least the clutch has gone in we've got the motor just hanging around up here um the clutch actually works we've um loosened it here to move the fiber plate to where we could get everything lined up now we're gonna go ahead and work on mounting the motor. Gotta put our custom made blue three pin plate on the end of the crank, line everything up, get the motor put in, tighten everything down and then do some minor electrical work because we made a uh-oh when we originally designed our electrical system on it. We made a uh-oh it looks like. Our pins aren't long enough to go through the fiber disc. Who made it? You got a worm in your pocket? Okay, so I made it. Uh, I thought they were long enough, and they weren't. So that means we're going to go ahead and try and pull the motor back. It's not tied down. We're just going to pull it out, take that plate off, try to drive those pins back out. We happen to have some 3 8 stops chilling them out here. Going to go ahead and cut these to hopefully the right way. Drive them in, weld them, hopefully get it all set back right, and try and get this back in. But, uh we might not be going, it might not be going to the show tomorrow. <laughs> All right, well that's the story of our life right now. I don't have time to film now. <laughs> All right guys, so after about three or four hours of fighting and doing and messing, we finally got the monster loaded. It's about 11 o'clock last night. We just now rolled it into the back of the trailer. Haven't test run it, haven't even fired it up yet. So I'll save cranking it up for tomorrow. But if um, you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to ask any questions about what you've seen, comment down below. And if you like my stuff, subscribe. See you.